Matthew 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, their trickery, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites, you false people? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. And they left him and went away. The Gospel, Gospel. of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Well, what do people say to you to try to trick you? Does anybody try to trap you or trick you? Did they say anything to you? Can you think of anything? So I should have given you a warning. You could have time to think about it. I remember that kid used to say to me, you can do that, it will never hurt you. Or they would say, we can do this, we won't get in trouble, nobody will know. You know, I think my teacher, she had eyes in the back of her head, you know, she said this. <laughs> because when I did it, she said, Mr. Metzner, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, um, you know, the disciples often tried to trick you. Not the disciples, the, the, the Pharisees. They were the guys that were supposed to be the really smart guys. They had a lot of rules. And everybody had to follow their rules. And some of their rules really weren't in line with what God wanted. So remember a few weeks ago in one of our lessons, they asked Jesus which was the greatest of the commandments. And they wanted him to pick out one over all the others. And he would go for it. He said, the commandments are like this. Love the Lord your God with your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And your neighbor, these summarize the commandments. So they're... They're put together in a summary. Love God, love your neighbor, or your friend. Today they're trying to trap him again. Because they're asking him, is it good to give taxes to Caesar? Do you know why? You know what would happen, that they thought would happen if he said yes or no? If, if he said uh, no, then Caesar would get mad at him. And that would get Jesus in trouble. Because they liked him. They liked to get him. But they, they didn't like him. They didn't like the way he loved everybody and cared for everybody. So now I have a couple of questions. Okay? So let's see if you can figure out why there are bad questions. Okay? So, Adora, have you stopped hitting your brother yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, so when you say no, what do you admit? That you still hit him. And if you said, yes, I stopped, what would you be admitting? You used to hit it, right? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, Goldie, have you stopped picking your nose yet? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the kind of trick question. So, so I think we, we need to be aware that there are people that will try to get our attention and trick us to do things and put us in a situation where we're not going to get along well, it's going to be a problem for us. Some of those will be your friends, because friends try to do those things to us, because they, they just want to get in trouble, or they don't care about what they do, and they, they, they want, or they even sometimes friends do, because they want you to get in trouble. So we just have to be uh, aware and, and think about it, because uh, people will do that just the way they did to Jesus. And the, really the reason is if, Jesus would do what they want, then he would say, I'm not very much of a, a Lord. I'm not God like I say I am. I, I, I don't do what I say I should do. So that's important for us to remember too, because if we behave in ways that say we're not the children of God, that gives a bad impression to people about God. Now that's not fair to God, really, but that's what people do. So that's why we try to honor him, because we love him and care for him. 
Boy, that was long. I'm tired. Are you? Thanks. See you later. God's grace, God's mercy, and God's peace be unto you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I know that you're not unfamiliar with uh, uh, some of the common uh, statements or uh, things that we sort of say that we believe. But I'm sure you know the one about in America or in relationships, we don't talk about money, we don't talk about politics, we don't talk about religion because they're tough subjects and they create a lot of turmoil and decide they're hard to talk about. It's kind of a triumvirate. I guess we could add a fourth one to it so we'd have a complete square, you know, we can say we don't talk about sex, right? See, but that's not in the text today, so we won't, we won't do that. But that's one of those other taboos. We don't, we don't talk about that. But isn't it remarkable that Jesus, our Lord, is not afraid to talk about those things? Today, he does talk about religion. He does talk about politics. He does talk about money. Not in the same sense I think we think of it, but he talks about those things. So uh, the Herodians, and the Pharisees get together. And as usual, and over the last few uh, weeks or more, they, everybody has been challenging Jesus to try to get him triangled with one thing or another that will get him in trouble. So a triangle is where you have two people and you bring in a third thing to sort of create disruption. Okay? So a few weeks ago it was, which is the best of the commandments? Because if they could get him to go that way, it would uh, mitigate against the kingdom. And spiritual people would get upset. Okay? Yeah. Uh, then there was the one about, um, well today, the one about is it appropriate to give taxes to Caesar or not? Okay. So people try to uh, track him. They use uh, the commandments. Uh, they use uh, where the money go. They, they will put him in, in between about the certain people that he loves and cares for that are important that others think should be excluded from his love, having categories. And these people who do this, they always have an interesting set of eyes. They want to overlook their problems and find a way to accuse others. So these guys are in the middle of the temple and they ask this question and Jesus says, well, bring me the coin. Ta-da, there it is. Do you know it was not religious practice to bring the money of the world into the temple? So here they are breaking the law and they're trying to put Jesus in a situation where he will get himself in trouble because he'll get triangulated with the emperor. My friend said Jesus doesn't answer the question, but he really does. He answers the question very well. He says... What does it say on the coin? Much like ours, it says in God we trust, although some people are trying to get that off, right? So he says, it says Caesar, right? So give it to Caesar. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And give to God what is God's. Something important for us to remember, and it goes along with Romans 13, where Paul talks about government is a good thing. We are part of it. We should support it. We'd encourage it. And this day and time, we have a hard time thinking that government's a good thing. But think about all the good things government does for us in spite of the things that continue to stick us in the side and jab us. But really, Jesus is having a conversation with them about loyalty. He will be loyal to who he is. And he's saying to them, you need to be loyal too. You have some loyalties you have to face regarding the government. And you have some loyalties you, have, you face toward God. Now, that, that doesn't make those other things gods. It's about loyalty. So now I want to tell you about a movie, because I think uh, it's a great movie. Uh, it can be a little squeamish at times, but I would encourage you to see the movie. 
The movie is called Hacksaw Ridge. Okay? Uh, how, how many of you have seen it? Just so I have an idea what's going on. Okay, so. So anyway, uh, the war is going on, the war that involves Japan. And um, this conscience objector, that's a person who does not believe in killing or carrying weapons or shooting people, stuff like that. He wants to serve his country. So he goes and he signs up, which puts him immediately in a loyalty situation with his own fellow troops and with the leadership in the army. And for the opening part of the picture, we go through this whole set of sequences where his own mates uh, jab him and tease him and try to get him to give in what he believes, his loyalty to his own understanding of his faith. And the military leaders try to do the same thing. So he gets beat up and knocked around. They, they want to get him out of the army. They want to force him to shoot a gun and take a gun to hold a gun. And he holds his ground. No, I have a right to do this. I just want to serve my country. I don't want to be bothered with the other stuff. I don't believe in that. No one believes he can actually do that. So we're at a big scene in the movie. There's a, a, a court martial trial. And uh, his father has gotten wind of it and goes to a high up general that he fought with. He has to fight his way in to, to get in to see the general. And he tells the general what's going on. So the general writes a letter and says, it is a belief of our nation and a practice that you can be a conscientious objector. You don't have to hold a gun. You don't have to shoot people. But you can, uh, you, you can serve if, if given permission. I guess it would go like that. So he goes running over to the meeting and there's a big commotion. And uh, in the commotion, the leader of the meeting says, well, what's going on out there? It's, it's this guy, he's making noise, you know, and I know. Well, and he comes barging in and he says, I want to talk to you. And he said, you can't talk to me. This is a proceeding, you don't belong. He says, I have a letter from General so-and-so. Okay, so he says, okay, give me the letter. So he reads the letter, he says, this um, uh, event is over. He will not be court-martialed. He has a right to serve. So now we're in the battle area. And the Americans are trying to conquer a ridge, which is in the movie is a straight up wall that has a big rope fence hanging. I don't know how the rope fence got there, but anyway. The, the, the American soldiers climb up every day and they fight the Japanese and they're trying to fight so they can get overnight and stay on the hill. But every day they're driven back. Every day they're driven back, they're driven back. And uh, turns out the Japanese are bringing people in through tunnels and everything. So one night the battle ends and everybody leaves, except this guy. And through the night, the soldiers at the bottom of the ridge see these bodies or these uh, wounded people being let down by a rope. And through the night, this man, true story, lets down 75 men that have been wounded to one extent to the other. And they keep saying, where are all these people coming from? And they say, it's this guy who couldn't pick up a gun, who wouldn't shoot a gun because of his convictions, but wanted to serve his country. It's really a movie about loyalty and the conflicts that we go through when we face questions of loyalty with those around us. And we have those questions constantly in the church because we constantly battle in the church about what is God wants us to do, what God expects of us, what we're called to do. And we all have a different understanding of what that means. And sometimes it's quite conflicted. And if we get into it, then it gets very difficult at times. We have trouble living and let living. We have trouble listening to what God's word says. And sometimes we take God's word so seriously that we must look at other people and say they're less than we are. So, um, what I want to say to you is that when Jesus' authority is challenged, you, we need to think about what, what Jesus' authority means. Because Jesus' authority is not about over and under. Jesus' authority is not um, uh, sort of applied in a negative, threatening way. It's not authority over against. Look at all the biblical words that we talk about when we talk about God. 
Mercy is God's helping us when we are not able to help ourselves. That's empowerment. It is a resource for us to manage and live our life to God's glory in a better way. Love is not over against. If you're in a relationship and you insist on a person loving you the way you want to be loved, that's not love. That's negative power against. Love is willing. Others love us as they express their love. And if we try to force them into a model, we haven't understood what Jesus' love is. It's, it's willing, it's free, it's gifting. Forgiveness is empowering because forgiveness says you are released from those things which hold you and bond you because Jesus loved you and he died for you. So when we think about Jesus' authority, it's, it's built in around things like love and, and mercy and, and healing and, and hope. Hope is a positive power because in the darkness of our lives, it gives us the opportunity in our hope in Christ to move forward into and through the challenges that it faces. So it's not, you know, like, I'm going to get you if you don't do this. It's a positive thing. So Jesus remains pretty consistent. I can't find inconsistencies in his, in his character, in, in the scripture's presentation of him. Sometimes I read it and I have some confusion about what exactly does that mean. How do I understand it? But the things of God and loyalty are about his loyalty to us and how he makes available to us. Now, we got to look at the other side of it because Jesus' loyalty makes us wonder about our loyalty and our response. Well, if, if you know, remember the baptismal font is back there. And when we are baptized, our parents bring us, or we come when we're older, if we make a decision to be baptized, we understand what it means to be a child of God. What does God do? He takes both of his hands and he wraps, us, wraps them around us and he says, I love you. You are my son. You are my daughter. If you believe in me and follow me, you have a new identity. And your identity involves loving the Lord your God with your heart, your soul, your mind, your neighbor as yourself. The summary of the two commandments. So it's, I'm loved in order to love, to care for, to, to uh, reach out, to be available. So, so that's part of our loyalty in response. We respond not because we have to, but we respond because God has touched our heart, and that's why we work at becoming the children of God God called us to be. And if it's, it's, if it's like putting us in, in bonds to do that, then it's not loving. So, um, uh, Debbie, will you help me? Would you stand up? So, how are you today? You good? You good? Okay. So, um, I need something from you. Would you give me $50? Now, um, I guess I'll just start and go down the road. No, no. <laughs> so all of you uh, think that Debbie gave me this fifty dollars, but but she didn't. I gave it to her earlier, and I asked her to hold it in trust for me for the time when I would need it. And that's why when I asked her for it, she was willing to give it to me without reluctance because she was taking care of and managing my money for that period of time. That's what Jesus is talking about today in the text when he talks about give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And I know you all do that. We all do our tax, and we try to work, and we push this a little bit to get a little more back, and how do we, you know, but I want to tell you something. If you don't do that, and you don't do it long enough, you might get away with it for a while, but guess what's happened? Somebody's coming to knock on your door, saying, 
you owe the man, okay? <laughs> Pay up, or we'll garnish your wages, or we'll find a way to get the money, okay? But see, for people of God, the second lesson talks about them, okay? It's people who are God's children, who have become uh, sons and daughters. Uh, Paul says to them, you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution you received the word of joy inspired by the Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so we have no need to speak about it. We have a lot of loyalties in the church. But at the conference, we heard some of our sort of sacred things in the name of Luther talked about from another side. One of them is that the word of God is not equal to the scripture. The confessions are not equal to the scripture. They are, they are interpretations of the scripture. They're trying to understand it, but they're not the word of God. So it's an interesting de distinction we need to make about, about our loyalty. It's to God's word. Sometimes the confessions get us in trouble a little bit. What about those patterns or habits that we have in the church, in each individual congregation? Those things that are adiaphora, that we've made kind of law, you know? Oh, you can't change that. In order to do mission, we can't change that. Why not if God's word has taken us there? But see, our loyalty to how we do it and what we do sometimes gets in the way of our loyalty to our Lord. Our loyalty to our Lord has to do with this illustration with Debbie. Everything we have, we say that, everything we have, our health, our home, our loved ones, are all gifts to us by God's grace through his hand. There are things we're valuing because God has his hand in making us them available to us. And now we and, and we receive those benefits that God gives us through his love, his mercy, his grace. And now we have in keeping, in loyalty to him, our responsibility to be and privilege to share and use those things in his behalf. That's what we do as the people of God in this place with other people. We are uh, God's emissaries. So give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God. Jesus answers their question, but he puts it in the right order and he makes it clear what it is to be God's children, to understand who we are and whose we are. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.